What is up, Packers fans, and welcome back to another episode of The Daily Draft, brought to you by Badger State Brewing in Green Bay, Wisconsin. I'm your host and the publisher of Packer Report, Ross Uglum. Very excited today to discuss a key position of need. In fact, I think most people would call this uh, the Packers' top position of need with Darnell Savage on his way out, uh, Jonathan Owens not under contract, Rudy Ford not under contract. You know, they, they really have nobody... Uh, that played a you know a key role for them outside of rookie Anthony Johnson Jr. still under contract. I'm talking about safety. What safety are we talking about, though? Washington State's Jaden Hicks, a very, very exciting prospect out of the Pac-12 and a guy that I think could really fit into one of the two positions. Unfortunately, it is the less valuable uh, position for Jeff Halfley's single high defense, but uh, it could, could be an impact player nonetheless. It, it is still an important spot. Um, it's just not that scarce spot, that that really hard to find f- uh, free safety center field. I don't think Jaden Hicks is playing center field, and uh, that depresses his draft value a little bit. But I think he's still going to be a pretty good, pretty good NFL player and um, somebody that I absolutely would not have a problem with the Green Bay Packers acquiring. Pros, he is a big dude. Um, cr- credit, by the way, to uh, to to Washington State. Only lying a little bit. Uh, they they gave him an inch, but they they gave him only a pound. So. Uh, credit to the Washington State, um, you know, uh, sports information department. We go after people when they lie about prospect size. Uh, they were an inch off, but only one pound off. So we'll we'll give uh, we'll give Wazoo a ton of credit for not lying about Jaden Hicks. A uh, big guy is six foot two, um, or six foot one and seven eight. Six, six foot two, two hundred eleven pounds. That's a big safety, folks. It's a it's a large. Uh, large dude, not necessarily the, quite the size of like a, a sub linebacker, but he's close. You got a lot of like 222, two, you got you got a lot of linebackers playing real snaps, real snaps at linebacker. Um, who weigh like seven more pounds than this guy, who <laughs> weigh like 11 more pounds than this guy, and especially with that real legitimate, you know, like 6'2 frame. Um, yeah, there's a lot of guys playing linebacker on pass downs that are about the size of, of Jaden Hicks. The other thing is um, he is, and I, by the way, when I call him a box safety, I'm not insulting him. Okay. He's an explosive athlete and like a fun player to have around the line of scrimmage that, that I enjoy watching play football. I just don't think he can be Nick Collins or Earl Thomas or Ed Reed and few, very, very few can. I, and not that he can't be even at those level of, of like that level, that basically Hall of Fame level. I don't think he should be playing that position. Is really what I'm saying. And so when I when I talk about those guys, I'm talking about the archetype. I'm talking about really the true single high free safety. That's the guy playing that spot. Um, he has played all over, and and that is what makes him an exciting piece. Uh, 450 plus snaps in the box last year. 100 plus snaps in the slot. 200 snaps at free safety and 20 snaps on the line of scrimmage as a blitzer. He played a ton of free safety, way more free safety in 2022 than he did in 2023. Um, he, he has done everything. He has done a ton uh, of stuff in, in a league with some really good offensive talent. I mean, there are some high level guys uh, in the PAC 12 on the side of the ball. You think about everything Washington was able to do in their three uh legitimate pro prospects at wide receiver. You think about uh, Caleb Williams and his weapons in Brendan Rice and other guys at, at USC. You think about uh, the, they're not really draft prospects yet, but there's there's some dudes at Arizona, not Arizona State, but Arizona. There's some dudes at Arizona. Um, there are really, really good skill guys in the Pac-12, and uh, he matched up with them and, and played all over and played well, and He's a, he's a guy I'm impressed with. He's got good ball skills, uh, 10 pass breakups and three picks over the last two years. And he's a good run defender from any delignment. He's a, he's a good, and, and, and I, what I mean by that is he's, he's in where he's supposed to be. Okay. He, he fits, he run fits well. He's in the gap that he's supposed to be. And, uh, but that's from all over. He, he fills the alley. Well, like D- Darnell Savage is an okay run defender uh, as a slot guy. He's an okay run defender when uh, he is close in proximity to the line of scrimmage when the play starts. When Darnell Savage has to come from depth and try and and come down and fill, that touchdown that he gave up to Christian McCaffrey is, I wouldn't say the norm, but like it happens a lot. He he is a problematic, Darnell has been a problematic run defender from depth. Jaden Hicks is good all over the place. And I'm not going to say great. He's been good. And, and, and the one big reason that I won't say great is he's a good tackler 
not great. Um, 26 total missed tackles over the last two years in 25 games. That's one a game. Um, that's not catastrophic, but you know, if that becomes one and a half a game or two in the NFL, because you're playing against bigger, stronger, faster skill players, it, it becomes a little bit more of a problem, but, but 26 missed tackles in two years. I mean, if you, if you're at 13 missed tackles per year, it's, Again, it's not elite, but it's good. It's fine. It's, you know, we give it like a neutral or we give it like a tiny little thumbs up in, in when we're writing the notes down, when we're doing the scouting, we're doing the grading. Um, it's the tackling is good. Uh, it is not great. It is not bad. It is good. Uh, at his size, he profiles as a good matchup for tight ends. Um, something that Green Bay has struggled with for years is matching up with tight ends and at, you know, 6'2, 2'11. Two, uh, is, is he the same size as TJ Hawkinson? Nope. Is he the same size as, you know, going up against Luke Musgrave in practice? No, but uh, it's it's better than, you know, having a, a slot corner on those guys. Or it's better than having a linebacker that can't run on those guys. Or it's better than having an undersized safety on those guys. He he could be a, a really good matchup with tight ends in the future. Um, really good, and, and this is why I think he does fit in as a, a box guy. He's, he's really, really good smooth um explosive uh, his change of direction is elite all of the athletic things that you would want to see from Jaden Hicks on film outside of like foot speed long speed uh, I think you see I think he, he like I said I, I think he, he, he changes direction well um his his hips are as they call him oily right like he he can and and you know that's important right because he's going to be an overhang defender at the next level. I think whether he plays in green Bay or, or, or wherever else, and those tight ends and those slot receivers, you know, they've got a two way go. They got a lot of space to operate. They can run in breaking routes and out breaking routes. And, and that that's why those uh, like nickel guys, especially the change of, of direction and the agility and the explosiveness is more important than the long foot speed, because you got to chase guys all over after they're, like I said, they have, a ton of by 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 simply just ge like geometry when they have these interior um starting points in the offense either at slot or at tight end they have a ton of real estate on both sides especially with the the narrower nfl hashes your your slot receivers and your tight ends absolutely have two-way goes at the top of the route stem they can beat you inside they can beat you outside and that's why um overhang defenders need to be able to change direction quickly and nickel defenders, slot defenders need to be able to change directions quickly. And Jaden Hicks can and does. We don't have agilities. I don't think he ran them. Um, so I, I could be put, putting the cart before the horse, but I'm talking about on film. What I watch when I watch him play, um, I see smoothness. I see change of direction. I see explosiveness. The explosiveness with the 37 and a half foot vert, it's right there. We, we can see it. The, the 10 foot two broad is just kind of good, not great, but the vert is super impressive at that size and super impressive with Robbie's is not that many people on this earth uh, vert in 38 inches. So um, credit to Jaden Hicks for, for being a good athlete concerns uh, cons as you will. Um, the actual foot speed is the big concern. And then him choosing not to run in Indianapolis. I, I'm not going to say it confirms anything. It just doesn't alleviate anything either. It doesn't make you feel better about the number one, like box thing that you look on, you leave unchecked when you watch him on film is, can he run? Can he really run, run? Um, so despite the free safety usage, as I mentioned, um, he had 200 free safety snaps last year for Wazoo and then was really their primary free safety in 2022. I don't think he's anything other than a box safety in the National Football League. I, and, and specifically in a Jeff Halfley defense, he's not, I don't think, the center field guy. I, I would not have him do that. Um, struggled in man coverage, and, and Halfley plays a ton of man. Now, uh, when I mentioned that he had, you know, over 100 snaps in the slot, that's that's where some of these struggles have, have come. I would say he struggled more uh in you know cover one and cover zero looks trying to slover, cover slot receivers then he struggled trying to match up with backs and tight ends i would not say that he has a tremendous amount you know like a huge problem in man coverage against tight ends uh, or or backs but specifically against tight ends he'd be probably fine uh, but man when he was man up on a slot receiver that's just not his bag and it's and by the way it's not a lot of guys bag that are six two and, and more than 210 pounds it's that's not what those human beings are supposed to be able to do. Um, 
I think, you know, the, the last thing I'll say in cons here was the, the tackling consistency. Um, he's good, not great. And, uh, he tries to kill people. <laughs> and I mean that obviously in a football sense, but like one of his, you turn on his highlights on YouTube. One of the first things you see, um, is him just smacking Braylon Allen when Washington state had that upset of Wisconsin and, and he tries to, to smack people. And, and I'm not concerned in like, uh, you talk about like cam chancellor, not able to, uh, maybe survive in today's NFL, just kind of head hunting people and smacking them, you know, the way that he does. And, in that sort of enforcer overhang role, you know, when I talk about the archetype of of Earl Thomas as the free, well, the archetype in the cover three system with, with Halfley and Sherman and yada yada is, well, the cover three that the the Legion of Doom or Boom, excuse me, the Legion of Boom with, uh, you know, uh, Cam Chancellor doing a lot of the booming. And whether or not you think that that would fly in today's NFL, I the the booming, if you will, that Jaden Hicks does, I don't think will will get him fifteen yard penalties, but. Um, he misses sometimes when he tries to, to you know, really smoke guys. And um, when they're not as big a target, maybe sometimes as Braylon Allen, he, he misses. And so that is that is on the list of concerns is the fact that he will miss tackles. He's not a perfectly consistent tackler. And sometimes, in my opinion, um, some of those missed tackles do come when he's trying to, you know, get on Sports Center. And and not that he's being selfish. I mean, he, I think he likes to punish guys. I think he likes to I think he likes to hit people. Uh, okay, Packers fit. Athletic standpoint, we just need more data. It wouldn't matter if I had the the Packers uh, uh, the Packers people stuff from our good friend Jacob Morley that you can get with the Green Bay Draft Guide up in front of me because we don't have enough data yet. Um, at the NFL Combine, he jumped, so we know that he's an eighth of an inch shorter than six two. We know that he weighed in at two eleven. Uh, we know that he has a thirty seven and a half inch vert and a ten foot broad. We don't have a 40 time. We don't have 10 yard split. We don't have a 20 yard split. Uh, I don't think we have a bench. We don't have a three cone. We don't have a short shuttle. We don't have much. So uh, as far as, you know, does he fit their thresholds? I don't know. <laughs> I don't. He's big enough, big enough to play in Green Bay after that. I I, I don't have much for you. Um, I think he's the box safety archetype, right? So, um, you know, had everything worked out for for everything that they wanted. The last time that they really separated these roles, had everything worked out perfectly, that would have been your archetype being Nick Collins as the free safety and Morgan Burnett as the box safety. Morgan Burnett eventually even became like a sub linebacker. Those two, uh, Burnett and Collins, had they been allowed to work together long term, I think would have made beautiful music in the secondary. But um, if you're talking about a Burnett or a Collins, Jaden Hicks is a Burnett. Jaden Hicks, I think, is potentially a harder hitting and potentially more athletic uh Burnett but that's that's his role to me uh that's his role is the um for what it actually was is the Charlie Pepra and and I think he would be a very very souped up version of Charlie Pepra uh and and if you're talking about even like Savage is free and Amos is as uh, strong he'd be the Adrian Amos in a division with Hawkinson Laporta and Komet it would be not bad to have a safety like Hicks on the roster a safety that profiles as a guy um that can match up with these physical tight ends in the pass game the tight end position is something that has given Green Bay all sorts of trouble. Uh, Quay Walker has not been the answer to, to shutting down tight ends. And a, a player like Jaden Hicks has the chance to be maybe not the answer, but part of the solution. Um, his consensus value is good. Uh, his consensus value right now is at 79 overall, which is right in a zone where Green Bay has three picks. They pick at 58, they pick at 88, and they pick at 91. And you start to get that late in the draft, and – uh, you know, the consensus as to how it correlates with where they actually get picked is way different. The, the, it'd be a lot of years where the 79th overall player, you know, gets picked at 50. And a lot of years that the 79th overall player gets picked at 88 or 91, where, where Green Bay has picks. So um, he's right where, where they might be looking to address the position if it's, you know, an offensive lineman and a corner, uh, you know, at, at 25 and 41 or uh, whatever. It doesn't matter. Pass rusher, maybe. Uh, maybe they get really in love with one of these wide receivers. I don't know, but if they opt to go with the more premium position, because safety is not a premium position outside of the real true free safety. And I don't know that this class has one. Like we'll talk about Kalen Bullock, but he didn't want to tackle. Um, we'll talk about Cole Bishop and he's athletic enough. And he tackles, but he is profiled on tape as a strong safety. So we'll go, we'll go over this. But as far as like, I don't know if Nick Collins or Ed Reed or, you know, that position is in this draft, uh, Earl Thomas, whoever, you know, you talk about, 
Um, what Micah Hyde ended up being once he switched to safety in, in Buffalo, uh, what everybody hoped Malik Hooker would be. I don't know if that player is in this draft, but um, anyway, he is right consensus wise where they do have picks. Green Bay loves the Pac 12. Uh, one of you commenters, I can't remember whom, was, you know, said, hey, uh, it'd be cool if you, I'm not sure you quite this, you were quite this polite, but hey, it'd be cool if you actually laid out this Green Bay loves the Pac 12 theory instead of uh, just saying it. And, you know, what, what does that actually mean? Well, I, you know, I would say in general, the, you know, most of the NFL, I, I don't know what the percentage is. Uh, it'd be fun to look at. And I, I would guess that somebody's done the work. You know, I, I think the number one and two conferences, probably by a, a reasonably wide margin in producing NFL talent, would be the SEC one and then the Big Ten. Um, and, and I guess the ACC has Florida State and Clemson, though Florida State was down for a while. Um, North Carolina has been a decent producer of pro prospects uh, out of the ACC, but um, South Carolina has done a good job, too, with, with some pros. But the SEC and the Big Ten are kind of where things have been at. And, and look, there are good pro producing, uh, you know, schools in in the Pac-12. Uh, Oregon has done a good job. Arizona uh, State has had a couple of guys here and there. Arizona's had a couple of guys here and there. USC used to be, uh, literally, I mean, legitimately a pro factory. UCLA, the Packers have, you know, uh, Dayton Jones, talk about Kenny Clark, right? There, and, and then uh, you guys that aren't Packers and Eric Kendricks and Miles Jack, and you go on and on. Like UCLA has done a nice job, but with a ton of sec and big 10 and green bay being in big 10 country it's interesting to me that since 2009 the packers have taken nine players either from the mountain west conference or the pac-12 why do i bring up the mountain west conference was well, because I, I believe it's probably the same scout sam seal and um sam was is a highly respected guy and the two mountain west guys that i'm talking about are of course jordan love and Devonte adams two pretty darn important players um, in Packers history, Packers recent history. One looks to be potentially on his way to the Packers Hall of Fame, and one is already there. I mean, I know they haven't had the entrainment, but folks, Devontae Adams is a Packers Hall of Famer. Um, that though, you know, Nine picks in the first two rounds since 09 from either the Pac-12, and it's it's a bunch of guys. Kevin King is is one. Demarius Randall is one. Uh, Kenny Clark is one. I'm, I'm obviously not looking at the list, but Kenny Clark is one. Randall, Kevin King, um, uh, doesn't matter. D doesn't matter. Dayton Jones is, is, is one. Um, but yeah, nine guys since 2009 in either round one or two uh, have come from the Pac-12. And, and other guys, too, that, that have not been in the first two rounds as, as well, guys that they brought in um, from the West Coast, whether it be the Mountain West, James Jones at San Jose State, or the Pac-12, David Bakhtiari at Colorado. I think it's they, they love the Pac-12 because they love their West Coast scout. Um, and, and uh, you know, a lot of those picks have worked out and some of them haven't. But uh, that's why I bring up the Pac-12 when I bring up the Packers fit is uh, those nine draft choices in the first two rounds from that conference, a conference that I don't think um, is in the the top two. And then, you know, you throw the Mountain West in there. It's it, The Packers like the Pac-12 because they like Sam Seal. Uh, okay, so overall for me, a solid round two grade. Uh, he is my 64th overall player and safety number four. Thank you guys so much uh, for watching or listening. If you are taking this in via podcast, how can you help us out? It's easy. Buy the Green Bay Draft Guide powered by Pack Report and use promo code DAILY. That is D-A-I-L-Y for 10% off of that very draft guide. We're going to have a Packers-specific mock draft, some of the Packers' history and the thresholds. I'm going to write um, a couple pieces for that guide as well. Uh, more long form pieces about a, a couple of different topics. We have uh, between 250 and 300 different players graded and ranked. And then each one of those players will have a Packers fit uh, aspect as well. It, it is, you know, in our opinion, the, the top. And look, I want you to buy all the Packers specific draft guides, right? Uh, including the one that I used to write for over at Cheesehead TV. We are all one big family, but uh, it affects my family. If you buy the, uh, the Packer Report draft guide, for sure. Uh, check us out at Pack Report. Check me out on Twitter or X. I am at Ross Uglum. And do everything you're supposed to do here at the Pack a Day podcast. Like, subscribe, click the bell, get the notifications so that you can get every single bit of Pack a Day podcast content that you require. Have a phenomenal rest of your day, guys, and go Pack Go.